Episode 56 XN September 5, 2024. Updated Air Now Fire and Smoke Map. In Episode 56 XN 1 World 2 United States 3 Alaska 4 Arizona 5 Michigan 6 Minnesota 7 Oregon 8 Utah 9 Brazil 10 Iceland 11 United Kingdom 12 Denmark 13 Ghana 14 India 15 PM 2.5 and Human Health. Main Content. 1 World. Vicious Circle of Climate Change Wildfires and Air Pollution Has Major Impacts. World Meteorological Organization, WMO Global, 2023 Particulate Matter Concentration. Particulate Matter PM 2.5 for example. With a diameter of 2.5 micrometers or smaller, is a severe health threat. 2A United States. Environmental Protection Agency Newsletter. September 5, 2024. Updated Air Now Fire and Smoke Map. Today EPA and the U.S. Forest Service released an updated version of the popular Air Now Fire and Smoke Map to provide people with even more information they can use to protect themselves from wildfire smoke. The updated map has a new look and feel is designed to load more quickly and includes information not available in the previous versions. It is available on the AirNow website and in the AirNow smartphone app for iOS and Android devices. The previous version of the map will remain available through the Northwest fire season. Just click the gear icon in the upper right corner. Read a news release on the updated map. English Climate Pollution Reduction Grants. Today EPA announced the selected recipients of $300 million in climate pollution reduction grants for tribes and U.S. territories as part of the Biden-Harris administration's Investing in America agenda. The agency has selected 34 applications to fund projects proposed by 33 tribal recipients and the municipality of Saipan in the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands to implement community-driven solutions to tackle the climate crisis, reduce air pollution, advance environmental justice, and accelerate the clean energy transition. Read a news release about the selected applications. English 2B United States. EPA and Forest Service release updated air now fire and smoke map. Updated map loads more quickly includes additional information to help protect people from wildfire smoke. September 5, 2024. Contact information. EPA Press Office. Press at epa.gov. Washington Today, September 5th, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Forest Service released an updated version of the popular Air Now Fire and Smoke Map to provide millions of people in the U.S. with more information they can use to protect themselves from wildfire smoke. As millions of Americans have experienced wildfire smoke, can travel for hundreds of miles, including from Canada, affecting people anywhere in the U.S., said EPA Assistant Administrator for Air and Radiation Joseph Kaufman. The updated Air Now Fire and Smoke Map makes even more information available about wildfire smoke and air quality, information anyone across the country can use to reduce their exposure and protect their health. This updated map is a valuable resource for people taking action to protect themselves and their families from smoke impacts. The updated fire and smoke map has a new look and feel is designed to load more quickly and includes information not available in the previous versions such as air quality monitoring information on coarse particle pollution and ozone both of which can increase because of wildfire smoke. More information on individual wildland fires including the type of fire and level of fire activity when available. Information from low-cost fine particle sensors in Canada in cooperation with Environment and Climate Change Canada. The new version of the map allows users to see activity recommendations at a glance or to expand the information to see more including more information on actions to take to protect your health charts showing how air quality has changed over the past week and whether there are other fires within 30 miles of their locations. The map makes smoke outlook alerts more prominent and links to these forecasts were available to help the public better understand the possible impacts of smoke over the next several days. The Forest Service-led interagency Wildland Fire Air Quality Response Program issues smoke outlooks for certain large fires. EPA and the Forest Service made a beta version of the map available for public review in July. The new version reflects changes the agencies have made to date in response to public feedback. EPA and the Forest Service developed the fire and smoke map to provide the public information on fire location smoke plumes near real-time air quality smoke outlooks for large U.S. wildfires and protective actions to take all in one place. To give users the most localized air quality information possible, the map pulls data from monitors that regularly report to AirNow temporary monitors, such as those the Forest Service and air agencies have deployed near fires and crowdsource data from nearly 15,000 low-cost sensors that measure fine particle pollution the major harmful pollutant in smoke. The map shows this data in the familiar color coding of the U.S. Air Quality Index. To see you can view the fire and smoke map on the AirNow website or select the smoke icon on the bottom right of the AirNow smartphone app. To view the map in Spanish or to select a modified AQI color scale for users with certain color vision deficiencies, click the settings icon at the top right corner of the map. Download the AirNow app, Apple App Store, https colon slash slash apps, apple.com slash us slash app slash EPA AirNow slash ID 467653238 Google Play Store, https colon slash slash play dot google.com slash store slash apps slash details question mark ID equal sign com dot SAIC dot AirNow learn more about the AQI. 3 Alaska. University of Alaska Fairbanks, Georgia Tech Johns Hopkins University University of Michigan University of New Hampshire and institutions in France, Switzerland and Greece. New research has implications for Fairbanks winter air quality improvement. Razep View This article does not mention the air polluting emissions contribution in Fairbanks, Alaska of indoor residential wood burning. Just stop wood burning to begin with. Reducing sulfate will improve the air but reducing sulfate is not as effective at doing this at colder temperatures researchers found. From the article Geophysical Institute, particulate matter commonly referred to as PM2.5. Particles of 2.5 micrometers or fewer can cause respiratory illnesses and heart ailments. Work led by University of Alaska Fairbanks and Georgia Institute of Technology researchers shows that the effort to improve Fairbanks wintertime air quality by reducing the amount of primary sulfate in the atmosphere may not be as effective in the deep cold as intended. New research has implications for Fairbanks winter air quality improvement. Excerpts edited by Razep for brevity and clarity and relationship to residents against wood smoke emission particulates of 501c3 nonprofit organization. September 4, 2024. 
Work led by University of Alaska Fairbanks and Georgia Institute of Technology researchers shows that the effort to improve Fairbanks wintertime air quality by reducing the amount of primary sulfate in the atmosphere may not be as effective in the deep cold as intended. The research is published today in Science Advances with UEF doctoral student James Campbell as the lead author. The concern centers on a reduction in acidity reflected in a higher pH of fine atmospheric particles in Fairbanks, typically frigid winters, particularly around 40 below zero Fahrenheit. We're worried that reducing the primary sulfate won't be enough of emission control because more secondary sulfate would be formed because of the higher pH ice fog over Fairbanks, as seen from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. The author of this article is a graduate student in an associate professor research group at the University of Alaska Fairbanks UEF Geophysical Institute and studied through the UEF College of Natural Science and Mathematics. The UEF associate professor and a Georgia Tech professor oversaw the research. Other UEF co-authors include a professor and a research assistant. Additional co-authors are from Georgia Tech Johns Hopkins University, the University of Michigan University of New Hampshire and institutions in France, Switzerland and Greece. The state of Alaska required a switch to low sulfur heating fuel in the portion of Fairbanks with bad air quality defined as violating federal regulations regarding fine particulate matter commonly referred to as PM2.5. Particles of 2.5 micrometers or fewer can cause respiratory illnesses and heart ailments. The higher pH increases formation of hydroxymethane sulfonate or HMS which was discovered in Fairbanks winter air in 2019. Earlier research found that HMS accounts for a significant portion 3% to 7% of the community's fine particulate pollution. Little is known about the direct health effect of HMS on humans. The temperature effect on particle acidity is most obvious in extreme cold. The substantial HMS formation observed in Fairbanks winters during extreme cold periods provides clear evidence of it. Hopefully this work will help reduce PM2.5 pollution here in Fairbanks. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has put Fairbanks in its serious category for air quality violations under the Clean Air Act and has threatened the state with sanctions. This work stems from the 2022 Alaskan Layered Pollution and Chemical Analysis Project, or ALPACA, an international project funded by the National Science Foundation, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and European sources. It is part of an international air quality effort called Pollution in the Arctic, Climate Environment and Societies. Nearly 50 U.S. and European scientists were in Fairbanks in January and February 2022 for the seven-week study of the chemical interactions that lead to Fairbanks' air quality problem. For Arizona, lightning caused wood fire grows to 2,200. Acres near Superior Mission Superior, Arizona, AZ family. A wildfire burning east of the valley has grown to more than 2,000 acres since its start over the weekend. 5A Michigan. New York Times Climate Forward Newsletter. September 5, 2024. In recent months, large automakers have scaled back or delayed their plans to introduce new electric vehicle models. The EV future is coming. Just a little more slowly. Excerpts edited by Razep for brevity and clarity and relationship to residents against wood smoke emission particulates of 501c3 nonprofit organization. People mill about a white Volvo EX30. This week Volvo said it was revising its plans to have an all-electric fleet by 2030. In August, Ford announced it was slowing down the pace of its investments in new battery-powered models. Also, last month, General Motors said that it would delay plans for a new Buick EV and electric truck factory and a new battery plant. And in February, Mercedes-Benz moved its electrification goal back by five years to 2030. The list goes on. Does the latest news threaten U.S. ambitions of cleaning up its transportation sector, which is the single largest driver of the country's carbon emissions? Some of the recent announcements aren't substantial retreats. Volvo now says that its fleet will be 90 to 100 percent electric by 2030. There's still a consensus among carmakers that everything will go electric. It is just a question of how long it is going to take. Sales aren't growing as fast as they were last year. In 2023, EV sales increased by over 50% from the year before. In the first half of this year, they are up about 10%. That's partly because gasoline-powered cars are still cheaper than EVS, and many of the more affluent consumers who were first in line to go electric have already made their purchases. Then there is regulation. Early in 2023, the Biden administration proposed a rule with strong emissions restrictions on new passenger cars that would push the industry to gradually increase the share of electric vehicles in their fleets until an estimated two-thirds of new passenger cars it sold were gasoline-free by 2032. But when the rule was finalized this year, the speed of the pollution reduction goals was relaxed. That means that even though companies still have to reduce the pollution of their fleets to the same levels by 2032, they don't have to rush. Each year of delay means millions more gasoline-powered cars on the road polluting the atmosphere, and that will have a steep climate cost. Sales may not be growing as fast as they were last year. According to a report by the Environmental Defense Fund and Advocacy Group, over the past nine years manufacturers have announced $199 billion in investments that come with over 200,000 new jobs. The vast majority of those investments were announced in the last two or three years. By 2027, the manufacturing facilities in the works now will be able to produce 5.8 million new electric cars a year accounting for over a third of America's annual demand. The data still show automakers are confident the future is electric. As costs continue to decline, and as we see more of these manufacturing facilities come online, the picture is just going to improve. Electric vehicles are approaching a tipping point when they will reach price parity with gas-powered cars. EVS with 400-mile range could reach price parity with gas vehicles sometime between 2029 and 2033. The median range for gasoline cars is 400 miles. Four cars with tighter ranges parity will happen faster. The median range for a 2023 model year EV in the U.S. is 270 miles, though some models can do almost double that. In June, the average price of a new electric car or pickup was $56,371 compared with $48,644 for all vehicles. Many people will recoup that value with lower maintenance and fuel costs. Electric vehicles accounted for 8.5% of new registrations last year, but a 2023 survey by the Pew Research Center shows a much larger share of Americans 38% say they are very or somewhat likely to buy one. 5B Bloomberg explains why public EV chargers almost never work as quickly as promised. 6 Minnesota. New York Times Climate Forward Newsletter, September 5, 2024. 
A group surveys the vegetation at a solar farm in Ramsey, Minnesota. Solar farms have a superpower beyond clean energy. It is not your average solar farm. Solar panels stand in a meadow. As solar projects unfurl across the U.S. sites like this one in Ramsey, Minnesota, northwest of Minneapolis stand out because they offer a way to fight climate change while also tackling another ecological crisis. A global biodiversity collapse driven in large part by habitat loss. The sun's clean energy is a powerful weapon in the battle against climate change. But the sites that capture that energy take up land that wildlife needs to survive and thrive. Solar farms could blanket millions of acres in the United States over the coming decades. So developers, operators, biologists, and environmentalists are teaming up with an innovative strategy of solar panels combined with biodiversity. 7. Oregon. Spontaneous combustion causes large wood debris fire in Sherwood Crews, say coin.com, large brush fire in Sherwood, Oregon caused by reclaimed yard debris. Firefighters battling the blaze no injuries or structural damage reported. 8. Utah Coyote Gulch. Day. September 5, 2024 Coyote Gulch particulate matter PM 2.5 i.e. with a diameter of 2.5 micrometers, or both products found that wildfires over North America caused exceptionally high 9 Brazil. Wildfires destroyed nearly 20% of a forest near Brazil's capital and officials suspect arson Reuters reports. 10 Iceland. New York Times Climate Forward Newsletter. September 5, 2024. Other climate news several trucks and vans sit on icy rocky terrain with emergency workers visible. Associated Press. Climate change is making last chance tourism more popular and riskier. More tourists are eager to visit vanishing glaciers and ice caves, but warming is also making the sites unstable. 11 United Kingdom. If wood isn't the biomass answer, what is? Razep view why should biomass be an energy answer when there are clean alternatives to wood burning or biomass burning which are truly cheaper and truly renewable such as wind solar and geothermal. I have no confidence that a publication called Hack a Day is even serious about naming a workable solution to providing home energy or industry energy. Make a buck a day however you can is a more fitting description of this outfit than Hack a Day. Razep view the photo of the Drax plant shows the author's allegiance to biomass burning even in the face of its negative effects on human health and biomass burning's effects on hastening climate change. Why should burning straw be an energy answer when the author describes burning straw as a practice that enveloped his area of England with smoke until the practice was banned in the 1980s? This author seems to want to bring back the old polluting days of the 1980s. The health effects of PM 2.5 emissions from biomass burning are not touched upon in this article. The aim of this article seems to be to promote a new form of air polluting energy generation, let the consequences to human health be damned. Support of the money grubbing profit motive at the expense of human health and damage to the climate has never been made more clear. The author notes that burning fossil fuels and burning biomass emit CO2, but accepts the pollution as a way to make a buck. The emission of PM 2.5 is not mentioned in this article. Either the author is uneducated on the subject, or he has no concern for the adverse human health effects of PM 2.5 emissions. Biomass wood burning emits 90% PM 2.5 particulate matter of 2.5 micrometer size, the perfect size to infiltrate the human lung setting off a cascade of human health problems and early deaths. This article makes Razep not only tempted to reject biomass burning as a whole as an energy source but Razep is indeed ready willing and able to reject biomass burning as a whole as an energy source as a result of reading this willfully ignorant article. The author proposes many small biomass plants burning straw rather than one large biomass plant which is no solution to the problem of air pollution and the problem of hastening climate change. Excerpts edited by Razep for brevity and clarity and relationship to residents against wood smoke emission particulates of 501c3 nonprofit organization. Hack a day. One of the green power options is biomass the burning of waste plant matter as a fuel to generate power. It releases CO2 into the atmosphere, but it is. Biomass energy can also be a non-renewable energy source. As we stop using fossil fuels to reduce CO2 emissions and combat global warming, there has been an expansion of clean energy technologies, whether it is solar or wind. The problem is that for a power station scale operation, it becomes one of replacing older trees with new ones. A new full-sized forest tree takes many decades to do the same attain the stature of a tree that is cut down. There's an alternative model to that of the enormous former coal plant burning wood pellets, and it comes in the form of much smaller local plants running on biomass crops or crop waste from farms usually in the form of straw. It is worth looking at these plants in order to remind anyone tempted to dismiss biomass as a whole based on the wood pellet plants that there is a more sustainable alternative. A feature of growing up in rural England before the end of the 1980s was that at this time of year the land would be enveloped in a curious smog. We produced much more straw than we could use as a country, and the surplus used to be burned where it lay in the fields. The resulting ash would return what nutrients it contained to the soil, and the land being blanketed by smoke was just part of life. When the practice was banned it became the norm for combined harvesters to chop the straw and distribute it across the field where it would be plowed in to break down naturally. In the second half of the 20th century, we concentrated on the economies of scale offered by very large coal burning plants because it was relatively cheap to move a trainload of coal from the colliery to the power station. It is unlikely that we'd now build similar plants to burn wood unless we already had them left over from the coal era, so it is important to remind anyone put off biomass power that it doesn't need to be done that way. There is an alternative it relies on biomass that grows back on a yearly cycle with the harvest, and it could be coming to your county if it hasn't already. 12. Denmark. A study in Denmark has found that exposure to PM 2.5 is linked to an increased risk of infertility in men. 13. Ghana. Air pollution can reduce life expectancy by almost two years AQLI 2024 report Pulse Ghana. Air pollution especially from PM 2.5 particles continues to be particulate matter. Residential heating and cooking. Burning wood coal point 14 India. Meghalaya government shuts six industrial units for flouting environmental norms United News of India the MSBCB had previously issued multiple directions to the industrial unit mandating the control of particulate matter, PM 10 and PM 2.5, 15 PM 2.5 and decrease in IVF birth rate success. Air pollution linked to decrease in IVF birth rate success. Lab online exposure to fine particulate matter, PM prior to the retrieval increasing PM 2.5 exposure in the three months prior to oocyte retrieval.